This Week at NASA. We set uh, Friday, April 29th at uh, 3.47 p.m. as a launch time for the uh, mission. That announcement came at the conclusion of the mission's uh, flight readiness review, where uh, shuttle managers expressed satisfaction with the preparations for the program's next to last flight. This is going to be a very complex choreography, um, a lot of small tasks that all have to go when they're supposed to or they have to ripple down and find new homes which makes it a big challenge for the mission operations team and they have a pretty good plan with a lot of backups in it uh, to be able to handle that. During the 14-day mission the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer and spare parts will be delivered to the International Space Station by Endeavour and its crew of Commander Mark Kelly, Pilot Greg Johnson, European Space Agency astronaut Roberto Vittori and NASA mission specialist Mike Fink Drew Foistel and Greg Chamatov. Chamatov says his TV viewing habits as a youngster fueled his desire for space travel. I have to admit, I, I grew up um, watching a lot of Star Trek um, with my dad, and he was a he was a space fanatic. Um, this was in Montreal, and uh, you know, and on, you know, the space program was was uh, budding, and and. Uh, you know, he would also, you know, uh, see the, you know, pictures of Mission Control and say, who are those guys? How do they get to work there? That's got to be the most amazing job in the world. And the, the funny thing was, you know, for me, my dad said that he knew Captain Kirk because he knew him from high school in Montreal. And so at that age, you know, I was probably five or six, you know, and I, and, uh, and so it was a strange mixture of fiction and reality. Like, I knew this was fiction, but on the other hand, that, my dad knows this guy, <laughs> you know? And I, somehow that maybe made things seem more possible to me. NASA has awarded more than $269 million for the continued development of commercial transportation systems to carry astronauts to and from low Earth orbit. Four U.S. companies, Blue Origin of Kent, Washington, the Sierra Nevada Corporation, Louisville, Colorado, SpaceX of Hawthorne, California, and the Boeing Company in Houston received the awards in the second round of NASA's Commercial Crew Development, or CCDEV, effort. The money will accelerate the availability of U.S. commercial crew transportation capabilities and reduce the gap in U.S. human spaceflight capability. NASA should be out breaking the barriers, pushing the state of the art, and by transferring this function over to the private sector, it will allow us to focus on the really hard stuff the beyond low Earth orbit exploration mission that we want to embark on as soon as we can. Engineers at the Marshall Space Flight Center have begun final round-the-clock cryogenic testing of the first six segments that will form the James Webb Space Telescope's primary mirror. These tests in the space-like environment of Marshall's X-ray and cryogenic facility will confirm the mirror's expected response to the extreme temperatures of space prior to integration into the telescope's permanent housing. Each mirror segment is about 4.3 feet in diameter and weighs some 88 pounds. They're made of a lightweight but strong metal called beryllium and coated with a microscopically thin layer of gold, enabling the mirror to efficiently collect light. During cryogenic testing, the mirrors are placed in a helium-cooled vacuum chamber and subjected to temperatures as low as minus 415 degrees. The easy way to think about why we do these tests for Webb is it's an infrared telescope that's designed to look for faint heat signals from the universe. So the telescope needs to be cold to detect these signals. We have to understand how the telescope mirrors behave as they change in temperature and get very cold themselves because we know that things change their shape as they change their temperature. Testing will continue for eight weeks. 18 segments will make up the primary mirror Webb will use for its state-of-the-art infrared observations. Picking up where Hubble leaves off, JWST will be the first of the next generation of NASA's Great Observatories program. As for the Hubble Space Telescope, it presented this rosy picture to astronomers on the celebration of the 21st anniversary of its deployment into space. Hubble captured an especially photogenic group of interacting galaxies called ARP-273. The larger of the spiral galaxies, known as UGC-1810, has a disk that is distorted into a rose-like shape by the gravitational pull of the companion galaxy below it, known as UGC-1813. 
A swath of blue jewels across the top is the combined light from clusters of intensely bright and hot young blue stars. These massive stars glow fiercely in ultraviolet light. ARP 273 lies in the constellation Andromeda and is roughly 300 million light years away from Earth. The interaction was imaged on December 17, 2010 with Hubble's Wide Field Camera 3. Growing up in, in, in farm, looking up at the stars, thinking, what's, what's beyond there? Hubble has enabled me to, uh, to start penetrating and looking beyond what I dreamed of as a kid could even be there. So it, it, Hubble, for me personally, has just has touched my inner being. Hubble was deployed by the STS-31 crew of Space Shuttle Discovery on April 25, 1990. Piloting that mission was current NASA Administrator Charlie Bolden. Since then, Hubble imagery has delighted and amazed people around the world, rewriting astronomy textbooks with its discoveries. Well, we have a pretty comprehensive database and some very talented people that... NASA Chief Scientist that. Walid Abdelladi helped NASA celebrate the, right the 41st annual Earth Day with a series of live satellite interviews with TV stations around the country. Highlighted were NASA's top five satellite images of planet Earth that had proven most popular with social media users around the world. The pictures, ranging from post-tsunami Sendai, Japan, to the enormous Hurricane Earl, are examples of the Earth monitoring data routinely captured by NASA Science Mission satellites. We make these images available to people all over the world. We work closely with our agency partners and people take these and either just look at them for their own interests or turn them into information, turn them into science. Other Earth Day programs included a live web chat from Greenland with researcher Laura Koenig about NASA's Operation Ice Bridge a video about a climate and weather tracking satellite NASA plans to launch later this year, and the announcement by the Goddard Space Flight Center of a contest for you to create your own YouTube videos using NASA Earth Science visuals and themes. Here's an excerpt from a sample Goddard video. For more on the contest and other NASA Earth Day news, visit nasa.gov slash Earth Day. And now, centerpieces. 45 college and high school rocket teams from across the country gathered at the Marshall Space Flight Center for the 10th annual Student Launch Project. Activities included tours of the NASA Field Center and the U.S. Space and Rocket Center and the Rocket Fair where students displayed the rockets and payloads they spent the previous school year designing and building with mentoring help from NASA engineers. Student teams mingled to discuss the various aspects of their projects, and Marshall employees offered guidance about the designs and careers in science and technology. The event culminated in the launching of the rockets from Bragg Farms, just outside of Huntsville, streamed online by NASA TV. The agency's Academic Affairs Office challenges each team to build a rocket with a viable payload. Three, two, one, start! Then launch it as close as possible to an altitude of one mile. While they worked on their projects, the teams followed the same steps as a professional NASA engineer, taking stringent safety precautions and filing regular progress reports with their NASA mentor. These are new, fantastic kinds of opportunities that colleges and high schools are really starting to focus on. That is, just not learning from books, but also giving students the opportunity to get their hands dirty, to live and learn real life uh, engineering lessons, both from the failures and from the successes. And we've seen both today. Team Knight Rider from the University of Central Florida came closest to one mile in altitude, missing the mark by a mere 70 feet. Corporate sponsor ATK Aerospace Systems, builder of the Space Shuttle's solid rocket boosters, provides a cash award to the university team scoring highest on the many different aspects of the student launch projects, including post-launch analysis of rocket performance and payload. For a complete list of award winners and participants, visit the Student Launch Project's home and Facebook pages. March Madness continued into April, but it wasn't basketball that had everyone excited in Richmond. 
Instead, it was hundreds of engineering savvy high school students with a passion for robotics. Did we get it over here? 63 teams competed April 8th through 9th in the first robotics Virginia regional tournament called Logo Motion at Virginia Commonwealth University's Siegel Center. Students spent six weeks of intense work building and programming their robots so they could be ready for the competition and have a chance to compete on the national level. Well, the kids work really hard. The kids work incredibly hard. Uh, everybody here does. The mentors, everyone pitches in. Everyone's, you know, we've got, there's more people here than just fabricators or animators or people doing public affairs or people doing buttons. So it, it is a lot of stuff going on, a lot to do, and it, it's more than just building a robot. When it came time to battle, teams worked together to fight for a win. Team spirit was everywhere. Teamwork is really important. If you don't work well with a team, then it's you're probably not going to do very well in the match. The NASA Knights and Triple Helix, both sponsored by NASA Langley Research Center, walked away from the Virginia Regional as winners. I'd have to say that this year we've just kind of perfected how we play the game and everything, and we just really know what we're doing. We get there, we, you know, we say, okay, let's do a functionality check every time we go to the pit. Let's do a functionality check, make sure everything's working. If something's not working, we, we can take care of it. Then we just go back out there and keep playing and play the same game every time. Now it's off to the tournament in St. Louis, where the NASA Knights and Triple Helix will seek a national championship. They came from everywhere, braving earthly thunderstorms and perhaps some intergalactic interference to attend the third Yuri's Night Hampton Roads. Mauser Johnson from the planet Nebular. Some not only dressed for the occasion, they also changed their appearance. It's inspired by Star Trek, Orion Slave Girls. More than 1,600 aliens and Earthlings celebrated the 50th anniversary of the first space flight by Yuri Gagarin. The crowd at the Virginia Air and Space Center also paid homage to the 30th anniversary of the first space shuttle liftoff. A team of three honored the shuttle in a special way, one Lego block at a time. Construction officially started on January 11th and uh, it was finished about a couple weeks ago. Um, and then of course I worked on software. There's about 8,000 pieces in total, um, that's an estimate. Uh, I didn't really count them as I built. Yuri's night is billed as the world's biggest space party with celebrations all over the globe. This one, sponsored in part by NASA's Langley Research Center, featured dancing, a spaced out drill team, and a reggae band. Interwoven with the entertainment was the underlying message. NASA and technology are cool. People are crazy interested. They're, they really don't under, they didn't know that robotics had gotten this easy and this cheap and available basically to everyone. I just love all the space stuff and love to dress up <laughs> and see all of the um, excellent demonstrations they have down there. Demonstrations that confirmed that space is an exciting destination worth exploring. And that's This Week at NASA. For more on these and other stories, log on to www.nasa.gov.